Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode, another never-ending episode of Photoshop User TV, brought to you by... You just put it down. I just put it down here, Corey. <laughs> yes, Brought to you go. by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the fine people that bring you Photoshop User Magazine and all things Photoshop. The newest issue. It is the newest Boy, issue. That's a... Uh, so if you don't know, if you're watching us for the first time, which I, I can hardly expect that we ever actually get new viewers here, but if you don't know, we are, uh, we're, we're produced by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. One of the things that NAP members get is an issue of Photoshop User Magazine about Yay. 10 times a year. So, yes. Amongst other things that you get on the website and stuff. Oh, the membership almost alone is worth it just for this. Oh, yeah. yeah. So much more, but this, most, this alone is just awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and can I chime in? One of the great things about this is that you, you did an article mm -hmm. in there, and then he's got a follow-up of that article over on the NAP website. So if you are a NAP member, please make sure you go over to the NAP site because we've got all kinds of stuff over there. And we just launched brand new, the online in-depth training over there, full yeah. classes over there. So if you are a NAP member, make sure you go over there. We have got a load of stuff for you to check out. Absolutely. And more to come, for sure. So you, you've already seen them. Let me introduce my co-host here. <laughs> we have Corey Barker sitting right next to me. Welcome, Hello, Corey. welcome back, everyone. It's so, oh, it's our first episode of the new year. New year, new, new season. Year, new season what back. episode is this? Episode three hundred and twenty-three. Holy no, I think crap. that's wrong. Actually, it's uh, what is it? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Three hundred twenty-nine. Yeah. Three twenty-nine. Yes, Holy, even more crap. Wow. 329 episodes of this wow. thing we've been doing. It's most, been a long time. Most major TV shows don't go that long. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I, think, I think most people that are watching this are saying, you guys should just end this thing. Um, and then over in the uh, weather center there, we have Mr. Pete Collins. Hello. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good to be here with you guys. We're good, Pete. We have quarantine, Pete, because he's sick today. Pete is sick today. Pete, why are you here? Uh, just, he just loves I Photoshop just want to infect much. all y'all. <laughs> Paybacks. Good stuff. Too Pete. much eggnog for sure. All right. Speaking of too much eggnog, Corey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Say something. I have. I have it's I have, odd for me to introduce my own tutorial. So I know. Should do I it just, first. Yes, and I had too much eggnog. I had some just before the show. I had to finish it up uh, from the new year. No, <laughs> but we are going to uh, dive right in, and Matt's got something he's going to start out with. It looks like. Lightroom. Or, well, thank or you, Corey. That was a, was a wonderful, unexpected like Lightroom, introduction. Now he's in Photoshop. No, now I'm in Photoshop. Okay. All right, a quick Photoshop tip for you here. So, um, this was a photo I took out in San Diego, and uh, it's a semi-long exposure. It's probably it's probably only ten, you know, five to ten seconds. Mm -hmm. You can see there's some water kind of flowing up onto uh -huh. the onto there's the subtle rocks movement here. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here, can, can I show you some behind the scenes of this? No. So I bracketed, so you're going to see a lot of like bright ah. and dark pictures here, which which is fine. But here's what was funny about it is I was shooting these pictures along the, you know, here, and then I see this paddle border. And he comes up, so I put my telephoto lens on. Mm. I'm like, oh, let me get it. But, but mind you, when I first saw him, he was like coming across this beautiful light in the sunset there. He ruined it. But by the time I got my lens on, this is where he was. So anyway, I'm like, oh, cool, paddle border. And then what comes up? A wave. And so you can see here, oh, there's where it starts. I grab my tripod. Oh, yep. And then, uh, and then I'm back to shooting. But you can see the other problem here. Here's the wave starting. Mm -hmm. Here's the wave getting closer. And then here's me grabbing my tripod because the wave was good. Good save. So anyway, all right. That has nothing to do with the tutorial. Um, so forward. it's kind of a long exposure, but <clears throat> I didn't have I didn't have my uh, my my ND filter with me, mm. my neutral density filter with right. me that I could have put over and really gotten like mm. a 30 second or 60 second exposure sure. that that will dramatically change the way that water and that sky looks. We've all seen it's very popular. The sky gets streaky. Yeah, the water gets very very soft, streaky. The water's water, almost yeah. like silky smooth, mm. right? Well, what we can do here is we can kind of you can add the effect a little bit afterwards. So I'm going to make a quick selection over my sky. I'm going to press Command or Control J. Puts it up onto its own level uh, layer. And then this is the key, Command or Control click to put a selection around it again, because right. we're going to blur it. And I don't want that blur to go outside the boundary right. here. Uh, I go to Filter Blur. And then I'm going to go to Radial Blur for this one. And I'm going to choose the Zoom Blur method. And then you can move it around. 
you can move around where the zoom is going to come from. I'm just going to put it in the top left here. I still can't believe that that filter doesn't have a preview. I know. A preview would be wonderful because mm -hmm. the problem you'll have is, is figuring out the amount exactly, for this. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and since your selection is a rectangle, but it's showing it as a square, where is that exactly? Is that, it, is that's it, the guessing game yeah. for sure, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that is the guessing game. So uh, I, I guessed... I guessed around 25 to begin with, and that wasn't enough. Then I guessed around 60, and that was too much. I think 45 on the amount worked pretty good here mm. for it. So I'll deselect, and then I'll zoom in. And you can kind of see it here. Ah. Take a look. Before, after. See the, see the, the streaks in the clouds? Before. It's so dreamy. After, I, yeah, I, see, I like clouds like that. You could see it over here too. Mm -hmm. Again, before, and then after. I always like that streaky cloud type of look, just because it gives you. I think it gives some movement it's real. to a static. It's the difference scene. between real and fantasy. And you might have to take a, uh, and you might have to take a little eraser tool, because you can. And it's a see, little bit of a Yeah, you can kind of see my uh, my my selection wasn't perfect, so you can erase away mm -hmm. any of that. Now, that's that's the sky. So we gave a, we have a little bit of a streaky sky. Let's go grab our quick selection tool, and I'll just do a very quick selection of the foreground here, and then I will subtract. Just hold down your Option key on Mac, Alt key on PC. I'll subtract the sky. So now I have the water selected. Again, Command or Control J. Don't forget to Command click on it, because we want the, the blur inside of the bounds of this selection, and that's how we force it there. And I, instead of radio blur, this time I do motion blur, and I'll crank it up. I mean, you can crank it way up to where it, it takes away all detail. Mm. That's before, yeah. mm -hmm. that's after. But here's what you do. You click OK, deselect, and then just reduce the opacity. See, if I take it down to zero, it's gone. And as I start to bring it up, it kind of gives you that. That's what the 60 second exposure starts to look like. That's the water wizardry. gets really smooth. So here is the before all of our long exposure funness. And here is the after. So before. After and again, because they're all on separate layers, you can always tweak them, bring it down a little bit, change the whole look. So just something to play with, especially if you, you took a shot that That's you don't crazy. have that ND filter for. Yeah. The clouds, water works really good. It's really yeah. I mean, when you're on location like that, you're always trying to get it in the camera, of course. But you know, it's nice to know that you. Sometimes you, know, you just you, don't sometimes have Sometimes you it. don't have it, and it's, it's just like, you know what, I can do that later. Yeah, sometimes you just forget something. So yeah. it, it, it happens to me quite a bit, unfortunately. It anyway, <laughs> we are gonna, uh, we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we got a tutorial from Corey and Pete. We'll see you back here in just a minute. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Kelby, President of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. Of course, we just call it the NAPP, or just NAP for short, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about NAP and how for more than 15 years it's become the place where people go to get really good at Photoshop. Now one of the key benefits of joining NAP is that you get Photoshop User Magazine. It's a print-based magazine, packed cover to cover with step-by-step -step tutorials, real-world articles, and feature stories from literally the very best Photoshop trainers in the world today. As the editor, it's my job to make certain that we teach you the most important techniques and the most requested features and that we do all of it in plain English, straight to the point, and we teach it in a way that makes it really stick. Each issue is pretty thick, so it's kind of like getting a Photoshop book mailed right to your door 10 times a year. As a NAP member, you also receive exclusive access to the NAP member training site. It's the largest and most complete Photoshop online training resource of its kind. You'll have access to thousands of online tutorials and complete start to finish Photoshop training classes from the best in the business. Also, brand new with your membership, now we have full length online training classes on Photoshop. So you can learn 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter where you are in the world, from the world's very best instructors. We also have three different tech support help desks on Photoshop and Lightroom and on gear where you get your questions answered directly by our experts, one-on-one, -on -one, right when you need it. Another big benefit of being a NAP member is that you'll save money on everything from software purchases to Macintosh and PC hardware, from plugins to printing and everything in between, even stuff like hotels and rental cars. 
It's the power that comes with being part of an association with more than 70,000 members around the world. And because of our large membership, we've been able to negotiate special deals and discounts and special offers exclusively for our members. And we hear from members all the time that say, you know what, I saved so much on my first deal it paid for my entire membership. Knapp also produces the Photoshop World Conference and Expo. It's the world's largest Photoshop event where members from all around the world come together for three days of amazing classes and networking taught by the best trainers on the planet. Best of all, Knapp membership is incredibly affordable. For just $99 a year, you can have all of this and more. This is where people come to get really good at Photoshop, and I'm inviting you to join me here at Knapp right now and start learning today. Shine. All right, guys, welcome back. Well, you just saw a commercial for NAP, and we are super excited about what's going on. We're going to see Corey's tutorial in just a second. But if you haven't checked out what we've got over on the NAP website, you need to go check it out. We've got full length tutorials. I've got a great brushes class over there. I've gone through every tool in the toolbar. You we, did. We've it's got, like I mean, literally three hours, the brushes. three hours on the tools and the brushes and all that stuff. If you want to know what's going on with Photoshop, that's the place to go. And it's right there on your own NAP member website. Just go right up there in the corner, online training, and you get hours and hours of training. You've mm -hmm. got great stuff over there. All of us have spent hours putting these things together. Oh, we went Make the sure you check program. it out. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But your brushes classes, uh, your brushes classes, kick and butt. People like that one a lot. So very cool stuff. That's a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah. Mr. Barker, what do you got? I have something all movie related, of course. <gasps> dun, actually, dun, dun. Um, um, this is actually uh, something I saw on a movie poster. Uh, not surprisingly, it was uh, the movie Cloud Atlas just came out recently. It was a really weird movie with Tom Hanks. Yeah, apparently. I never got to see it. I didn't see it either, but it had a cool poster. <laughs> but um. What it was is this is kind of like the skyline. It was actually this water, actually kind of going along with the theme of the water horizon and everything like that. And then it just kind of had extended beyond into space, you know, with stars and everything like that. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, concept here. And I remembered I had some shots that I had taken on a cruise. You remember that cruise that went on mm -hmm. some years ago? This shot, I actually took this off the balcony of my suite in the uh, on the cruise ship. We were just kind of going in the, the sky. I thought the sky looked pretty cool. And I didn't think I would ever have a use for it until today. So, I'm just going to take this and just drag it on over to my working layout here, and let's scale it up a little bit and bring it down because I need the horizon to be pretty low because I need to have a lot of space um, up top for the star image that I might have. I'm actually going to squash it down a little bit, and I'm just holding down the option key, and you can actually squash the image down to the center there. Something about like that. That looks pretty good. All right. So we've got that horizon set pretty low, and this image looks pretty good. So now let's go and grab the image of the stars. Now this is just a simple stock image, again, found on Photolia. It was a really nice, you know, cosmic dust, cloudy That's scene. Nice I liked it. So that, again, I'm just going to drag on over by holding down the shift key and dragging over there. There we go. Again, holding that shift key down when you drag and drop over, drops it in the center of your uh, layout there. So it needs some um, scaling, so I'm just going to go ahead and scale it in here a little bit. Nudge it up there, right about there. Now, going to put a layer mask on that um, the image of the star. So I'm going to add a layer mask. It's a reveal all layer mask, so it's filled with white. But I'm going to use the gradient tool. Going from foreground to transparent and starting at the very bottom of that layer, I'm just going to drag up a little bit. It gives me a little bit of a fade to the stars. There we go. I want a bit. Okay, there we go. So that's looking pretty cool. But the image down here is still not really corrected. It just looks basically right out of the camera. So here's what I'm going to do. A few layer tricks that I use often for these types of effects is make a duplicate of that layer. And then I'm going to change the blend mode of that layer to overlay. Immediately it punches that contrast, really uh, helps it. But I'm also going to apply a color effect to this layer. If you press Command or Control U, you will bring up the hue saturation dialog here. I'm just going to click on Colorize. And we'll just move this over to the blue area so it gets a little bit more of a saturation there to kind of closely match the star image. So there we go. It's like, ooh. So yeah. it's letting a little bit of that natural sky color through. Yeah. But here's a cool thing. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer above all of those other layers. And then using that same gradient tool, I'm going to use the radial gradient. 
Now, same gradient type, foreground the transparent, but I'm going to get kind of this yellowish color over here. And then I'm just going to add that gradient right here in the middle. And then change the blend mode to something like hard light. Now, it's giving me this kind of cool, warm glow right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. It seems a little too intense, so I'm going to drop the opacity of that layer down a little bit. And look at this fanta fantastical scene we've got yeah, going cool. on here. I like that. So actually, That little orange thing at the end really kind of... Really just helps it. I mean, yeah. notice the difference there. It looks pretty cool there. It's not too bad, but that really just adds something to it, a nice balance. Well, it's the contrasting color, you know? It's like yeah. the warm and the blue. Really adds a real rich, richness to it. It actually looks richer on that screen than it does my actual screen. So anyway, um, as in the actual movie, they actually had the, the text here on the, um, kind of sitting on the horizon. Let's just kind of drop that to right about there. And that tells me right there that the angle, just to straighten up that horizon just a little bit there. That never now, happens to me. just to kind of help you, uh, bring this all together, what I'm going to do now is just add a levels adjustment layer at the very top of the layer stack. Um, but under the text there. And then just uh, kind of gives us a little bit more contrast here to kind of blend it all together. And there we have our cool, cool image. I like it. From a couple of just simple layer. So again, simple layer tricks with some layer masking, but being able to blend that. But it's like you mentioned, that, that color effect really added something there in the end there. Yeah. And that's again using blend modes in that, in that uh, very creative way. So I very cool stuff. Very fun. Awesome. Hey guys, we, uh, we are, Pete still got his tutorial. We're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll do Pete's tutorial, and we got our contest and prizes giveaways. and giveaways and all that fun stuff. See you back here in just a minute. Hey everybody, we are back with Photoshop User TV and we will not wait any longer for the Sick Guys tutorial. <laughs> the sick and I in mean the head. sick in more ways than one. Not sick just, in so not many just ways. healthy, but. Yep. All right, well, to be honest, I was playing around yesterday with some different images and um, I revisited the whole bokeh creator, bokeh, bokeh. Okay. I prefer bokeh because I like to say bokeh cabana. And, uh, anyway, <laughs> but I, I came up with a better way to create that was some. So bad. Pete. I know. To create some. Uh, it neat really effects. is a religious thing too. Boca, bouquet. It's, yeah. It's whatever. Okay, here's where you can create your own home-generated neat boca backgrounds very simply, very easily. First thing you want to do is decide what kind of color background you have. I've chosen this one right here, and I'm just going to simply do Command or Control J to create a new one. And what I want to do, the whole thing with creating bokeh bubbles is to have some different light and dark. And so I'm simply going to come in here, choose my color, and I'm going to increase, make it a little lighter. And then I'm just going to come in and start putting a couple dabs here and there. And what I want to do is I want to space these out because I want to create kind of a nice, well-rounded background. And I'm just hitting some on the edges, some here and there. Now I come in. I do a little bit lighter, and what's going to happen is these things are going to turn into my little bokeh bubbles. And so maybe I'll put a couple close together and one right here, and then finally I'll do a little bit lighter. And once you see what happens, you're going to understand the process and you can see how easy it is to make any kind of background you want with these, these bubbles. All right, so now that I've got that, what I always like to do is create another copy just to have a backup. And now on that layer right there, I'm just simply going to go to Filter, Blur, Field Blur. And for those of you who don't understand how to use it, what you're going to want to do is go to Field Blur, and you're going to want to crank this up to where they pretty much disappear. And you can see just by adding blur, they start to get pretty good as they are. They're just barely there. But what we're now going to do is increase the light bokeh. And not a lot is happening, even though I've cranked it fairly high up, because I've got to adjust my light range. 
the whole thing is with this light range is you're deciding what area from white to, to dark is going to show up in the bokeh bubbles. So right now I've got it set for very from white, but if I move this slider, watch what happens as I get farther closer to the darker areas. It's going to start to increase mm. and start to bring out those bokeh circles. Now here's where we have the idea to be able to adjust how intense back here with the light bokeh, but the size is going to be determined by the blur. Now I've got this whole control. I can get a little small ones or big fat blurry ones up mm. here. Big old fat. Right? And so it looks pretty good, but you know what? I'd probably want to add a couple more things in there. So I just do cancel. Now I come in and I want a couple brighter ones in there. So I'm just going to do a big blob right there, a big blob right there, and one right there, and one right there. Now I'm going to go do it again. Blur. Field blur. Crank this blur all the way up like before. Crank up the light bokeh. Bokeh. I know. I said it. All right, there we go. And now, oh yeah. So you can simply adjust kind of that depth of field. The light ones are going to look like they're close, and the darker ones are going to look like they're farther away. So just by applying those little dots wherever you want, according to the brightness, is going to give you that that feel to it. And so in no time at all, I just simply create that, hit OK. It's going to render it, and I have created my own background that I can use for anything with these bokeh or bokeh circles. Awesome, man. And just a, uh, cool. just a little a side note, because I saw uh, you, you'd made the duplicate layer to do it. Um, so if you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, uh, you've got Photoshop came out with some improvements back in December. And one of the things that they did is, is you, all those blur controls used to not be able yes. to be done on a smart object layer, mm -hmm. which is why Pete had to make a copy of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Because if you ever wanted to go back, you, you'd have to you know, restart it, the whole thing. Again, yeah. But uh, with, with all those updates to the Creative Cloud, so if you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, you can turn your layer into a smart object layer and you can apply all those blur filters to it now. So Well, and one of the reasons why I like to do it this way, first of all, I'm old school and I'm, yeah. it's hard to remember to do that well, sometimes. Well, not everybody has a Creative Cloud either. Yeah. Yeah. But also, now I could go in and I could make several copies that move those dots around a little bit it, and then blend them again. There's yeah. so many things you can do with it. Uh, I always yeah. like to have that. What I do on that one, let's go back and look at it and play around with it. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I mean, it's, it's, it's only for Creative Cloud subscribers, so if you don't have the Creative Cloud, then you'll definitely want to make a copy of your layer. It's a great update, though. I mean, you, you, you try it once and you're like, how do we live without this? For yeah, so some long? neat things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, we got some prizes to give away. First off, we have from On One Software, maker of very cool Photoshop plugins. We have Perfect Layers 2. Mm -hmm. And we also have, and this one, this is a brand new book. I just, I just saw my first copy of it this week. This is from uh, Photoshop World instructor Colin Smith. So it's called Video in Photoshop for photographers and designers. Very nice. Um, so speaking of Photoshop World, Photoshop World is coming up in April. April. It's yes. like mid-April, right? Like April 15th-ish, something like that. So hold on, hold if on. you want to go, now's the time to sign up because everything is cheaper when you do it early. If yes. you wait until March, you will pay more for everything, including Photoshop World. But April 17th through the 19th. Awesome. In so, uh, Orlando. Yeah. In Orlando, Florida. So if you want to go, now's the time to start planning it. Uh, you'll save money on registration. You'll save money on everything. And you'll be able to get into some of the classes you want. Uh, Corey, how do they win prizes? All you have to do is go to kelbytv.com slash contest. As you see right here, simply pull on the pull-down menu here. Go to Photoshop User TV. Enter your name, email your website if you wish, and any comments you have. You want to, anything you want to see on the show, how much you love the show, how much you love Pete. <laughs> anything like that, please leave a comment. We will choose a winner at random and you will win these fabulous prizes. Great. Cool. Petey, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yep. I hope I infected y'all. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we With love, it. of mm. course. Corey E. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you to all of our uh, crew here in the studio today. Juan, give us a little uh, jib shake. Yeah, there, there shaky jib, shaky yeah. jib. All right, hey guys, thank you so much for uh, for sticking around with us today. We will be back next week with more Photoshop TV. Until then, we'll see you then, soon, sometime, maybe. Perfect.